This video will demonstrate how to use the ocean tools in Houdini to generate two different ocean scenes, as you can see on the screen. Uh, the shady and material setup will be covered in a different video. A link will be posted in the description below. I'm first going to start off with a two minute overview on how to hook up the ocean nodes before starting to discuss how I generate these ocean effects. Okay, we're going to start off with a simple example. So we're going to drop down an ocean spectrum node. So this will generate all the ocean waves for us. By tweaking these parameters, you can fine tune how the waves look and behave. The ocean spectrum then gets plugged into the ocean evaluate node, which will take all the ocean data and all the parameters that we tweak here and displace this geometry that we will plug into the ocean evaluate input on the left it'll displace this guy with this data generating oceans for us now this grid is very small so we're gonna make this a little bigger So you can see a little bit of displacement right here, but since the grid is very low uh, geometry, we won't see much. So remember to increase the geometry. So that looks a lot better. The first one is a very simple ocean floor that I've almost uh I, I dropped in an ocean spectrum node and an ocean wave node both of these nodes contain almost very little changes from the default parameter values so this ocean spectrum provides most of my smaller waves let's take a look at just the ocean spectrum so I'm not going to go over the parameters. What I will go over is the noise. So I'm just going to take out the noise and you can see a lot of tiling. So to fix that problem, I added some noise and this really broke up the tiling for me. Next, I have an ocean wave. I added five of them, but for you to see it, I have to increase the size of the grid. So you see the five larger waves. I'm gonna just put this back. I take the ocean spectrum that gives me all my smaller waves and my ocean wave node, which provides the larger individual waves, and I merge them together. And I feed it into the ocean evaluate, which will use all this wave data and displace this grid to create my ocean floor. So this is what it looks like. So I did render this out with materials. This is what it looks like. Uh, let me play it. I will go over how to set up this material and uh, the material for the foam, as well as how to generate the foam in just a bit. The material for the water is actually very simple. It's just the Redshift uh, water preset material. So there's not much to the water. The foam uh, material is a bit more. So let's look at how 
the foam is generated. Now I drop down an object merge node in order to get the wave data. So let's go over, which is this node here, which has the ocean spectrum and ocean wave node merged together and all the wave data fed into here. Then I feed in all that wave data into the ocean foam node. You need to be aware that this grid size in the ocean foam has to match the grid size of your ocean floor. So the grid of the waves, which is this grid. So let's take a look. Oh, sorry. This wave, so it's 200 by 200. 200 by 200. In fact, I created a relative link to it. So if I ever change the ocean floor size, this would automatically change as well. Which then generates all the foam particles for me. It also generates uh, these attributes, which I can then later on use uh, to set up my material. Since the foam is particles, it does get quite large. But I did file cache all of the foam particles. So we're on frame 91, and there are 2.8 million particles already. So it does get quite big. You might want to use a file cache and cache out all the foam. Now I'm going to show you a different ocean effect that can be achieved by using points to instance the waves and masking out certain areas in the ocean. I want to show you a simple uh, ocean effect that I came up with where it has sort of something coming out of the ocean. So the f uh, this is what it'll look like. It starts off in the middle and the foam gets spread out like something's trying to come out of the ocean from under. Okay, so let's dig into this. So I start off with the circle, which is a nerve curve. Uh, it didn't have enough points, so I resampled it. Then I animate the circle, so it starts off small and it grows. So this is the basics of this effect, which is really a really simple effect. I take all these points and I feed it into the ocean spectrum on the left input. So this is where you have the wave instancing points. So this is where you want all the waves to come from which will be these points. Disconnect these guys, just to give you an idea of how it just this ocean spectrum looks like. So you can see the waves instancing in the middle and it goes bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's the effect. However, that only gives me a ring of waves. I also wanted waves everywhere else. So I'm going to disconnect this. And we're going to take a look at this one. So this is another ocean spectrum node. I start off with the same circle. But this time, I throw on a poly extrude. So I get a cylinder. It's a closed uh, polygon. This is just positioning it. And this is where the animation. So it has the same animation where it grows. The next step is that I have to convert this polygon into a VDB. Because I need the SDF. 
Now, because th this cylinder is animated, it does grow over time. Uh, the VDB uh, does take a while to calculate. It needs to calculate a new VDB every frame since the cylinder is different every frame. So I throw in a file cache in order and cache all the VDB together. So uh, I can do it all in one shot and then rendering would be a lot quicker as well as debugging uh, debugging the ocean spectrum waves if I'm fiddling around with the waves. So let's take a look at... Oh, after I cache the VDB, this will act as a mask. I plug it in to the second input of the ocean spectrum, which is the mask input. Basically, I'm telling the ocean spectrum wherever the VDB is, do not have waves, but everywhere else I want waves. So in the ocean spectrum node, in the mask tab, for the type, I choose suppression. So I'm suppressing the waves wherever the cylinder is. And then the results You see this, uh, the cylinder growing, and there's no waves in the middle. So that's the effect. Next, I combine both of these and merge it by merging it. And then feeding it into my ocean evaluation. The results is this. This effect can be used for scenes where you have something big coming from below the ocean floor and submerging to the top. I made another video to demonstrate how to shade the ocean water and ocean foam. It'll show how to set up the materials and demonstrate how the lighting has a big effect on the water and how the attributes generated from the foam seen in this video are used in the materials. This video was mainly focusing on techniques on how to use the ocean nodes in Houdini, and the other video will explain the ocean shading.